Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Country Conversations with Diva D. And uh, this is going to be my review, recap of The Real Housewife of Salt Lake City. How you doing? At uh, Mother Wendy. Now, this is uh, Season 4, Episode 9, and I'm going to call it Monica's Revenge slash Self-Centered. Lisa. That's my title. But the real title is, um, don't mess with my sound bell. But I had to juice it up. Give it a little spice. Anyway, things open up with Monica and Angie. And you already know it's about to be some mess, right? So Angie gives her a book. It's all about loving herself. Lisa told Angie that Monica said that uh, old boy, old Sean over there, was good in bed. Now, that was a horrible, horrible game of pass the phone, right? Now, just to give a little recap. On my childhood, we used to play that game uh, at my neighbor's house. And you will be surprised at what... One thing, we would only say one thing, like one phrase. You would be surprised how that phrase ended up being like, could have been three words, ended up being like 45 words. So right there, it lets you know that Angie had gotten some bad information. And I think Lisa uh, sprinkled season on it because she was, she's trying to get K on her side, basically. Um, so she said, Monica, like, I never said that. Um, she was saying that, you know, she was talking about the gay men who are allegedly sleeping with Kate's husband. That's who said that. And so Angie K said, well, I understand. I am trying to be sympathetic with you because I really technically have been in your situation. Even though my mom died when she was really young, guess what? She was an alcoholic, and she was never really around when she was alive. Now, I'm trying to figure out if the alcohol had something to do with her death. <sighs> okay, probably did, but she didn't say. And then, um, Monica tells her, you know, uh, she is really, she really hates that she couldn't stay because that was the closest thing that she's had in a family event in a very long time and then in confessional she says that her husband was the one who had the big family and they did all family things together and after the affair um uh, it's like uh the family kind of shunned her and i not i not only think that it was the family who shunned her i think that um the church did too is from my understanding and if the husband or the dude that she had the affair with is still in the church or if her sister-in-law for that matter who is still with the husband is still in the church and monica is the only one that got excommunicated that's sad but that's not the way she's telling the story but that's how i'm seeing it you know if her sister-in-law stayed with the guy that she was having an affair with because apparently the affair is over because Monica is alone. <laughs> so, and then she just finalized her divorce. So, you know, it's some stuff in there that I'm not understanding. But anyway, Kate says that, um, so she was basically raised by her father. So, which, you know, kind of shows why they're so close. So, um, now, in the next scene, Whitney is planning her daughter's birthday party and Miss Ass. Lisa is over there with her. Lisa is trying to build a team against Mark. And she says that um, she's going to, uh, why would she, because um, Whitney tells her that she's going to invite Monica and Mary. Well, she wanted to invite Mary, but <laughs> Mary is not coming, so she didn't bother to invite her. And everybody knows in my faith voice, that Monica, Mary don't care. <laughs> Mary said 
Oh, watch what happens live. I came back to save the show. So whatever scene I, I'm in, I am the show. <laughs> okay? So if I don't if I'm not at that party, then what does it matter? I'm still on the show. My name is in the credits. I'm the friend of the show. So I'm here to save the show for you and your check as well. And that's the attitude that I took on in Mary Had on. Mary don't care. I could tell you that, you know, without you me doing my little embellishments here. <laughs> Mary, Mary don't care about in, being invited to the party, but then when they'll say, well, anyway, she terrorized my daughter. And I'm like, yeah, I probably did with that story. You know, Mary told a story about the girl in the accident. I'm like, I'm not going to go into it, but they did a flashback. And um. So when it's, you know, like I said, she lets her know that she invited Monica. And she get the screw face, Lisa, immediately. And uh, that's when Lisa does the most disgusting thing that I've seen a housewife, a housewife do in a very long time. When it says that she pities Monica because of the Usyk uh, situation that she's in with her mother. And then Lisa goes... <laughs> I think it's really convenient. What? I think it's really convenient that she's suddenly having an abusive situation with her mom while, you know, she's going back and forth with me. Everything centers around Lisa. Well, when it says, well, I believe her because I have a strong relationship with my mother too. And then she's like, well, I, well, I'm just kind of dying, down it because, you know, we know how, you know, Monica is. So, you know, I'm doubting the situation that she's trying to say that her mother has her in because maybe she may be, you know, stretching the truth a bit. Her and her diet coke, by the way. So, we get to Heather. And Heather is still talking about the mission. Um. She's like, well, you know, maybe it's a different type of mission because it seems like Lisa is a different type of mormon because she can wear her, you know, her shoulders out. And, you know, in my church, you couldn't do that. Maybe she's an East Coast Mormon. And Meredith's like, what's the difference? Meredith don't know because I think I want to say Meredith is Jewish. So that's kind of why she didn't really fit into the mold of Mormonism, and I don't think she converted. Why do you have to convert when you move to South Lake, South Lake City from whatever you are? Because I think that's a lot of the reason why they don't fool with Mary. Because Mary is Christian. Well, Pentecostal, but Pentecostal is a division of Christianity. So, Bobby and Whitney and Accus, and get their makeup done. Moving right along. <laughs> Heather FaceTimes Edgy K. And um, she was like, well, once again, she brings up Jack's mission. And Edgy K is like, why is this girl so bothered? Heather tells Monica, uh, well, you know, uh, Lisa was talking about you. And uh, we, we made it to the party because the scene with the little FaceTime thing wasn't very long. But we go to the party, and that's when Heather tells uh, Lisa, I mean, Heather tells Monica that Lisa was talking about her. And then uh, Lisa floats on over. Hi. Like nothing is wrong. <laughs> and then um, Monica's like, do you think I'm telling a lie about my relationship with my mother? Lisa throws a dig. He says, well, I was just, you know, observing the situation and, you know, I thought that you talked to your mother in a very condescending, mean type of way. And then she says, that's just what I thought. And Monica says, really? I mean, why would I have to lie about something like that? Well, it just seemed like your mother was like being really nice. She, Monica, you met her for five minutes. 
<laughs> right. And then, oh, thank you, Lisa. She skates away because she's, you know, but all above Monica. And Monica said, that's right, skate away, 50-year-old. And then she turns and looks at the rest of the crowd and says, oh, she wishes she was me. 50 and fabulous. Rich like me. All of that. And by the way, she dresses in fake Chanel. Lisa talks to Heather. And then Heather once again brings up the mission, which she has no business bringing up. And um, she says, you know, why wouldn't you invite me on Jack's journey? Because, you know, I'm an expert. If Heather brings up how she's an expert one more time. <laughs> Lisa leaves and Andy Case um Andy Case says to Monica, we need to fix this. I feel like I'm in the middle. No. Lisa put you in the middle. I don't care. Okay, Monica. Tell her. And then she says, obviously she doesn't want, want us to be friends. Lisa is at home after the party. So when this is the next day. Or it could have been the same night. All I know is she at home talking to John about all of her problems. And John is being a sympathetic ear. She gets a text from Whitney. And she carries on a full-fledged conversation while her husband is talking to her. And she is in another world in that text. Uh, phone. Text. And uh, John is just talking to a real gentle. <laughs> then he said, well, I hope you get everything you need out of this situation. And the scene goes off because John is like, yes, which, why does she come in here looking for my uh, opinion and she's not paying me any attention? Well, your wife is self-absorbed and she is shallow. So, of course, she's not paying you attention. Pause right here. I have to go pick up my pharaoh. And we're back. Now, the pop-up shop is on underway. Angie arrives in that damn jumpsuit. And she asked Lisa if um she believes Mama was in an ace of relationship with her uh, um, mom. Now, if I'm repeating something, it's because, of course, I don't know where I was. <laughs> so, bear with me. I had to, like I said, go get my ferals. So, jumpsuit. What is it with the jumpsuit? I have seen just about every body on Bravo with that jumpsuit and just when I thought that it was over what do I see Larsa Pippen in their jumpsuit <laughs> okay anyway Angie K tried to tell Lisa that she fell for Monica and, but old self centered Lisa, you know, I don't want to hear it. Um, she has a problem with me. I don't have a problem with her. And I don't like have a problem with her because she's always starting with me. Well, the moment we've all been waiting for, Monica arrived. So Monica is there, and Angie said that she felt like she was in the middle. And Monica says, because she puts you in the middle. Lisa does that. I don't mind you, like, being friends with her. And then Lisa tries to tell Whitney, Whitney, what's going on between <laughs> she and Monica and Whitney don't have time for it. Whitney is ready to get up on that stage 
and do her thing with her young no red gay yeah, yeah. And anyway, while Angie is talking, Monica tries to pull. I mean, I'm sorry. While Angie and Monica are talking, Lisa tried to pull her away. And uh, Monica said, Harry, Harry, chop, chop. Your mommy's calling. <laughs> and then Monica said, Oh, you're so bothered by me. This is Tess. Knock it off. Monica says, You ain't my mama. At least that's what I'm saying she said, but that ain't what really, really what she said. She said, You know, you're not my mother. And she said, And sister girl, wait. She said, You ain't my mama. And Lisa said, Cully. And no one wants to be. Uh oh. What's she saying that for? And uh, Whitney is up on the stage trying to get her up speech, and she's looking at him on his like, Excuse those people, my guests in the back. They are embarrassing me. But then they try to get quiet. But Monica says, You clearly have a problem. Lisa says, I'm freaking trying to enjoy the sound bowl. Monica said, enjoy it. Old people need it. <laughs> Ooh, hilarious. Monica is killing her. Not literally. <laughs> there goes speech. Angie can't say, that's low. I'm older than she is. And then Lisa said, and not only is she older than um, I am, so is Heather, and so is Meredith. And then she says, would you wear it? I'm trying my best <laughs> to get through this, cause I'm thinking, and I'm seeing this thing in my head, and it's cracking me up. <laughs> okay, Pillsbury Dough Girl. And Monica said, you're so pressed by me. Like, pressed like a panini. And then Lisa in confession says, Well, the reason why she keeps bothering me, maybe, be because she is jealous because I can buy drinks and she can't. Well, that's not exactly what she said. I did embellish that a little bit for a uh, same effect, <laughs> but you get the gist. And um, she starts to drink, right? Now, Lisa. Lisa is a classist to the ultimate. And that's why I love Monica. Giving it to her. <laughs> Monica says, you are like a trap stamp. You know, you want to get attention everywhere you go. True. Lisa said, attention. I don't have to act like I need attention. You're one of the ones who's acting like you need attention because you don't know how to act in public. Monica says, well, I may not know how to act in public, but there are several ways that you can be an intellectual and street smarts is one of them. And I'm winning. <laughs> and you don't have that. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, that was hilarious. I'm telling you, this scene had me cracking. Uh, if only Mary was there. <laughs> and then she says, uh, okay, and I'm, I'm about to go. And then she says, bitch, when Lisa says she's about to go. I'm sorry, that was Lisa who said she's about to go. Okay, I'm going now. And she says, leave then, bitch. <laughs> No, not the B word. <laughs> and a part of Whitney, she's up on the stage and she's like, please, please forgive me. Forgive my friends in the back. And 
and Lisa is having a fit. So she's trying to get uh, everyone's attention. So she runs to she runs to Heather and tries to get Heather uh, a rundown of what's going on. And while she's giving Heather a rundown on what's going on, she's like, I'm so mad right now. I am very upset. Look at him. Look at him over there hugging. She's over there hugging Monica. Like, girl, how old are you? Yes, you are 50 and you look every bit of it. But you are truly classist and cliquish. And girl, that's why we all, the Twitter community, was tearing your butt up. You thought we were tearing you up when we saw that picture of those crow's feet. <laughs> Ooh. Then um, she was like, okay, I'm nothing I call Angie KK. Hey, I'm so upset with you. I'm disappointed. And then Kay's like, well, you know, I pretty much took your side in this. I'm still your friend. And then Monica dips. And that ends the episode, but it was so hard for me to get through that because I was cracking up by oh Monica. Bravo, Monica. Bravo, um, uh, Mary. Y'all are giving and you are bringing SLC back to life. Come on in. Come on in. These are country conversations with DVD, commercial free entertainment over here. So, <laughs> I am still tickled. Like I said, I am replaying that scene in my head. Because Lisa got to up. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, it was some moments when she was, she was, you know, and coming back. But that tram stamp on attention everywhere you go. Monica, you should have been up there with the shade assassins. <laughs> and even though I'm about to be 50. Well, I'm just turning 49. I didn't feel like you were age shaming her at all. <laughs> just like she class shames you, you can age shame her. It's even. There you go. I see what I see. Now, like I said, I'm about to close. Country Conversations with DVD. Get the likes up, like, and subscribe. Comment down in the comment section. Remember I told you all, in order for me to keep those numbers up, you still have to interact for it for at least 15 to 20 minutes. That is what it is. I don't make the rules. YouTube does. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. And as I do when I close, I'm trying to get my hands up.